thank you all so much for coming here today. I'm really excited to see so many players that are making decisions about what our canal is, what the future of our canal is going to be here today. Um, so Brian's introduction touched on our organization's programs and goals. I'm going to delve a little deeper into that, um, get more specific about what our goals are, how our programs are addressing those goals, and then our future visions for both the Gowanus and this conversation in this room. Um, so what is the Gowanus Canal Conservancy? We are a network of professionals, neighbors, and volunteers with a fascination for the Gowanus' dynamic ecology and a concern for its future evolution. As you all know, the Gowanus Canal and watershed have had a colorful history. Former salt marsh turned into a productive industrial corridor, now less productive and far dirtier. As dynamic as this history is, we're looking towards a period of extremely rapid change where this landscape is going to completely alter. These are the major pressures or sort of challenges facing the canal today. Um, first, the cleanup. Um, right now, the Gowanus Canal is full of coal tar and poop from the legacy of canal side industry and our combined sewage overflows. In the coming years, the EPA is going to dredge and cap the bottom of the canal, and the city is um, planning to install a more robust gray and green infrastructure to help curb CSOs. Thank you. Um, development. Again, we've been touching on this a bunch today. This promise of a cleaner canal has invited an era of construction and development pressure. The development is currently happening on a site-by-site -site basis, as we've mentioned several times, often with spot zoning of industrial or manufacturing lots, and without a comprehensive plan. Understandably, the speculation has neighborhood businesses, residents, and activists very fearful of both losing the unique character of the Gowanus and their place in the neighborhood. And of course, this is all happening within the lens of climate change, sea level rise, and increased storm events. The area experiencing the most development pressure is right in that floodplain. So we see within this crisis an opportunity. As the canal changes, we envision the evolution of an open, clean, and alive Gowanus Canal watershed. With accessible open space along the canal shores, clean water, soil, and air, and vibrant ecological, business, and cultural activity. This landscape is a hybrid of past, present, and future a bustling and productive and ecologically rich matrix. We believe that cultivating a network of stewards is integral to cultivating this hybrid landscape. Anne Spurn writes, urban form is dynamic, ever unfolding through dialogues of statement and response. These dialogues are articulated by individuals and by groups who in transforming the city and nature are themselves transformed. If we are to envision a new kind of park on the Gowanus Canal, that acknowledges the past and looks into the future, that buffers the coming changes and knits the neighborhood fabric, then the entire community needs to envision and be engaged with this transformation, whether they be a resident, a developer, a business owner, or a volunteer. Hence our organizational framework. Our small staff and board facilitate the stewardship done by a much larger network of volunteer coordinators and volunteers. Our 50-plus dedicated volunteer coordinators organize and lead projects throughout the neighborhood, stewarding and learning about the Gowanus' dynamic ecology. These projects engage about 1,000 unique volunteers annually. While our volunteer interventions build towards our physical goals for the canal, they also build a civic ecology in the neighborhood, a network of constituents with an understanding of the canal systems and a sense of responsibility for its health. And how does this group interact with the larger community? As you all know, the Gowanus is an incredibly intricate network with a wide range of stakeholders and opinions. We work to facilitate the dialogue about this unique urban ecology across the spectrum, from small community groups to larger city agencies. And we see today's conversation as part of that facilitated dialogue. There are many professionals here today that are making decisions that will shape the future form of the Gowanus. A collaborative di dialogue can knit these sometimes disparate projects together. And as Brian mentioned, we define our scope as the watershed, which is the blue, um, as opposed to just the banks of the canal. 
In order to address the CSO issue, it's imperative that we engage the entire area where the sewage is coming from, which is throughout the two sewer sheds that make up this watershed. This physical imperative facilitates the formation of a community identity with clear relationships between high ground and low ground, park and waterway. Within the frame of this watershed, we are testing and refining interventions, programs, and partnerships that develop ecologically productive public open space. And the orange on this map, the um, solid orange is interventions, the sort of transparent orange is our tree stewardship area that Phil mentioned. This unique stewardship model thrives on iteration in, well, first on this, sorry, this slide, our, innovation, um, our interventions lie in the interlocking realms of volunteer engagement, education, and design, each of which we believe is essential to landscape change. And then the Venn diagram, this unique stewardship model thrives on iteration in which volunteer organization of built projects is followed up with regular maintenance, which can be then used to demonstrate best practices and advocate for design changes to be integrated into the next iteration. We are continually refining and coalescing our programs to promote this iterative cross-pollination. Our backbone is our twice monthly clean and green work days. On these days, we engage volunteers in direct action environmental stewardship in the watershed, including planting native gardens, turning compost, installing public art projects, and small construction work. In addition to benefiting our urban ecology, these work days bring people down to the canal to experience and appreciate this landscape. One of our longest running habit projects, our bird and bat houses, are located at points along the canal that are both strategic for visibility and for habitat. They are painted a signature chartreuse, a color that has no bearing on their habitat function, <laughs> but is extremely visible to the community. These constructed habitats are an assertion of the canal as an ecosystem that birds and bats are currently part of, com combating ideas of the canal as just a cesspool. Changing the perception of what the canal currently is can change community visions for what it could be. Um, and as Phil mentioned, our urban forestry team is an excellent example of one of these more iterative programs. So we have a very active street tree stewardship team led by citizen pruners who care for the trees around the Gowanus, um, both pruning and then um, mulching and um, weeding the street tree pits. So working with Tree Kit, we um, mapped all the street trees in the critical zone around the canal and are developing a maintenance plan for the stewardship zone. We also partner with Trees New York to run twice yearly citizen pruner classes, graduates of which return to the Gowanus to care for our trees. This combination of volunteer engagement, education, and planning ensure that our volunteer hours are as effective as possible and develops a network of urban forestry stewards. Um, with success of this, we're similarly developing a suite of programming around green infrastructure. With the support of DEP, the EPA, and Congresswoman Velasquez, we've built the Sixth Street Green Corridor, a series of high-performing bioswales. We're now integrating them into our volunteer program for maintenance and monitoring and developing a citizen pruner-like curriculum to teach residents how to steward bioswales. These pioneer stewards, as well as the developed curriculum, are gonna be an incredible asset to the city as the DEP green infrastructure plan is rolled out. Another corridor project. Our wildflower corridor is currently installed along three blocks of 9th Street. Volunteers built planter boxes, grew wildflowers, and planted the boxes right outside the doorsteps of residents that had pledged to steward them. This project is developing a new set of neighborhood stewards and starting to articulate an important potential pollinator corridor from Prospect Park to the canal. And many of the stewards that live in these houses, I mean, many of them would definitely not come down to our work days. Some of them can barely get to their planter. So it's really engaging a whole different set of the community. Again, it is essential that we engage stewards throughout the watershed. It's additionally important that we start young. With generous support from um, DEC, USDA, and Con Edison, we're developing a STEM, which is science, technology, and engineering, and math curriculum that's focused on the Gowanus. With this curriculum, schools in the watershed can teach the next generation of watershed residents to care for their urban environment. And um, the map here is different schools in the watershed. We're currently piloting the curriculum in three of them, but we eventually want to roll it out in most of them. Um, the curriculum development process also creates opportunities for teachers to engage with this unique ecology, as they did in canoes this past spring. 
Um, and this then brings us to these larger visions. So we worked with DLAND Studios on the sponge park planning process, which Susanna is going to talk about in more detail during the second panel. This is one of their drawings from the study, which I think we already saw at once today, um, which articulates the potential for a connective network of public open space along the edge and key cross streets of the canal. Much of the network shown along the canal is predicated on the setback now required for new construction, which has also been mentioned several times. Um, of course, the logistics of realizing this exact plan are quite complex, as many of these lots are privately owned and under varying circumstances, including different ownership, contamination status, and different bulkhead conditions. However, we maintain that a public space network like this is possible and necessary, given the influx of people and toilets that are coming with the development. We've been developing these ideas in more detail on the salt lot, which is a central node of the canal, that triangle in the center. Here at the intersection of 5th Street and 2nd Avenue, um, the sanitation department keeps salt for the city roads. They've been welcome hosts as we've built a compost facility, nursery, and edge gardens along the canal, including the only existing Gowanus salt marsh. With generous support from DSNY, Councilmember Lander, and the rest of city council, we're planning a large expansion of the compost facility on the site, alongside a salt storage facility and a nursery. This productive node can then anchor and provide growing medium for a robust public park on the tip of the peninsula as well as the larger Gowanus Park network. We firmly believe that the Gowanus can and should remain a productive landscape. This initial park node acknowledges the material production that goes into making public space and keeps this action at the core. As these plans have formed, DEP has also been zeroing in on the gray infrastructure needed to reduce CSOs. The plan calls for two large CSO retention tanks, one in each of the two sewer sheds. There are various sites still in the running. One major one is the salt lot. Though such construction would obviously delay the building of the salt lot park, this could be an excellent opportunity to forever designate this critical central node as public open space and stack that gray infrastructure with green infrastructure. It is critical that we integrate long-term visions for a cleaner canal with those for a more accessible and public canal. With the maintenance operations at the core, the Gowanus Canal Conservancy will be in a perfect position to continue facilitating the stewardship of our evolving open space network as opportunities emerge. However, in order to achieve this network of ecologically productive public open space, we need to knit this set of disparate developments into a cohesive, connective, and healthy neighborhood. We have come to feel as an organization that the neighborhood needs a larger framework to manage this change, but don't think it's practical or realistic to push for a master plan in a sea of so many moving parts. Instead, we propose a set of community-developed design principles and guidelines that will coordinate the approach and methodology to the coming physical changes. Rather than a prescriptive material list of benches and pavers, this would operate as a set of best practices and spatial ethics that could be continually refined with input from designers, builders, and neighbors. We imagine this as a set of strategies towards our distinct landscape typologies. What do we want our corridors to transport? How should our street ends engage the community? And what do we imagine as the future edge of the Gowanus Canal? We see today's forum as the first step towards developing this collaborative approach to the canal, um, and I'm very excited to hear the rest of the pre presentations and continue this dialogue with you all. <laughs>